Uh, Africa is currently reeling from various public health emergencies, raising concerns among the global health experts, especially because the continent seems to be disadvantaged when it comes to diagnosis as well as vaccine procurement and disease management. According to the Africa Center for Disease Control and Prevention, over 200 disease outbreaks were reported um, on the continent last year. Let's now uh, look at the role of universities to strengthen Africa's disease fighting capacity. We are now joined by Professor Tulio de Oliveira, who's a virologist and director at the, the Center for Epidemic Response and Innovation. Prof, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for making time for us this morning. During the height of COVID-19, um, when we were also trying to um, as quickly as possible, come up with a vaccine. One of the concerns was raised was that Africa doesn't have the capacity. There were various initiatives um, that were then um, ensued following that, including, for instance, the NENT uh, South Africa vaccine manufacturing campus um, that we were told would be built at the Breckenfell. Um, but since those conversations have taken place, how far has the continent come to actually ensure that it does have capacity to manufacture um, vaccines. Okay, yeah, yeah. Good morning, Andrian, and to all your viewers. Yeah, so a lot has developed, in, especially in South Africa and Rwanda and Senegal in the in the last five, 10 years, yeah. If we talk more specific in South Africa, South Africa, we, we put a competition, yeah, that we compete with 41 countries, global countries, and South Africa managed to win the competition to create the World Health Organization or WHO first mRNA hub in the world. Yeah. Very strong competition and very big investment in that program alone, uh, close to, to, to 50 million euros or a billion rand were come to South Africa from, from grants, mostly from Europe, yeah, to set up yeah, very advanced uh, facilities. So here in South Africa, very close to me in Cape Town, we have Afrigen that, that now is producing uh, yeah, mRNA vaccine from the beginning. You also have big investment in BioVac, yeah. In addition to that, what one have to do is not only to invest in the facilities, but mm. quite important on the skill based. And so this week we just opened a very large program of a fellowship program that we call the African Star Fellowship Program. It's 170 million rand of initial investment to bring like hundreds of fellows to be trained not only on science, but how to move science to generation of the skills to create the companies that we need to solve not only the vaccine problem in South Africa, but also how to generate diagnostics, how to generate therapeutics, and how to fuel a strong industrialization in biotech in South Africa and in the continent. Yeah, um, and the African Star Fellowship Program, um, who are some of the potential candidates that you are looking at? Um, will they solely be people from a pool on the African continent or are we looking beyond the African continent, considering that, for instance, um, in Europe as well as the United States, you have, um, from the pharmaceuticals perspective at least, companies that have been able to build capacity and even establish their own universities? Okay, thank you. Yeah, so, so, so we, yeah, we have quite a, a big and ambitious plan, yeah. To start, we, we managed to come together with the two strongest uh, scientific organizations on that field in, in Africa. One of them I direct is the Center for Epidemic Response Innovation at Stellenbosch University, the state-of-the-art facilities in the Biomedical uh, Research Institute just outside Cape Town. And the other one is the Institute Pasteur. That's a French institute that have been producing vaccine for hundreds of years and mm -hmm. to close to 100 years in Africa. So this partnership, in addition, got an injection of fund from the MasterCard Foundation, 170 million uh, rand. And then we went for partnership with industry, uh, lots of industry in South Africa and multinational in the globe that are also contributing, that will like host the fellows. So they will spend like months with us, but also months with industry. So they can also get the skill to do to do that. And we are talking about 
big companies like Temo Fisher Scientific, like Abbott Laboratories, with Afrigen, with BioVac. So mm -hmm. it's quite exciting to see this public and private partnership, yeah, with foundation investment to, to really change how things are done in South Africa and Africa. Yeah, I think part of the conversation that's very important as well, Prof, is what we saw once again during the height of COVID-19, and that is around um, IPs and what happens at the World Trade Organization level, is that considering that you have, um, as part of the structured program, a master's, a business administration um, on healthcare leadership um, a program, does this also then speak to the business side um, of, 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 of vaccines, as an example, but also how do we address the question around IPs? Okay, thank you, Adrian. Exactly as you highlight. Yeah. So we, we we have to provide the tools and the skills to be people be trained on on the business aspect. Yeah. So what we did in a partnership with the Stellenbosch Business School, we are funding uh, dozens of fellows to 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 attend the, the MBA on healthcare leadership. We expect thousands of applicants for that program. Yeah. And then with another infrastructure that exists in Stellenbosch University, the Launch Lab they are getting very advanced training on intellectual property and commercialization. So for example, Stellenbosch at the moment has a portfolio of 35 companies that have been created in the last few years. Yeah. And they are investing quite a lot to create uh, more companies that are associated not only with the university, but with the greater ecosystem. And as part of that, you have to train people not only on scientific discovery, but how to how to run a company, how to run a, 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 mm. a financial audit, yeah, and how to work with lawyers to protect intellectual properties. Yeah, and I guess also the ability to raise funds because we know how expensive research can be. Yes, yeah. So, for example, yeah, between the two organizations that I direct in South Africa, SERI at Stellenbosch University, and CRISP at the Nelson Mandela School of Medicine at UKZN. In the last three years alone, we have brought over a billion rand of in, uh, external investment to South Africa. So that's money that has been mostly donated by foundations like the MasterCard Foundation or the Rockefeller Foundation, or even the World Bank to invest not only in capacity, but also to create some of the top labs in the world. And that's something that many of your viewers may not be aware, but South Africa has one of the very high level scientific, medical scientific ecosystem that bring billions and billions and billions of rand every year to the country. And that's what we have to do. We have to keep investment to create what you call the knowledge economy. So for example, everyone see how much money the United States of America or China making on producing yeah, yeah, equipment or medical diagnostics or, 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 or computer systems. And that's what we have to do in South Africa. We have to invest more in the knowledge economy. And as part of that, we have to take advantage of having some of the most advanced uh, labs in the world. Yeah. And then with investment to try to create a whole industrial uh, ecosystem that can produce diagnostics, vaccine, therapeutics, but also all the reagents in, in the middle, because that will not only make South Africa and Africa safer, but it's also going to bring a lot of economic development. Yeah, and we've seen um, how countries like South Africa has actually benefited from medical tourism. But just quickly in conclusion, Prof, um, when is your first intake for this program, for the fellowship? So, 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 so this, this, this fellowship, it's, it's one of many, to be honest. In the, last, in the last four years, we have received 600 fellows from 48 African countries. This one we take to a, to a new level. The call for applications will come in March 2025 and the first intake in uh, July 2025, yeah. Okay. It is, anyone can apply. We only have two big restrictions. Yeah, have to be less than 35 years old. It has to generate the next generation and 60% is woman. And anyone that work or live in Africa, it's, it can apply to this fellowship. 
Okay, Prof, thank you so much for your time. Professor Tulio um, de Oliveira, the virologist and director at the Center for Epidemic Response and Innovation at uh, the Stellenbosch University.